Buckley's and fake watches and stuff. I did that, I think, in, like, fifth grade, maybe. I'm not sure. Like, we did took a bus. I grew up in Ohio, so it's not that far of a drive right down. Uh, that was uh, that was interesting. So, um, how do you think? I, did I get a haircut, a beard trim? I've been shaving, obviously. I think that there's other things that are growing wild on my head. So... <laughs> Uh, that's cool though. Yeah, I haven't I haven't spent a lot of time in DC. I did go to a VS Live that was in DC and got to walk around and see some stuff. Um, yeah, you know, all this stuff kind of in DC itself is like all blocked off and whatnot, but it was interesting at least. So, um, but that should be cool. At least you're in like the outside of the core DC because I hear the traffic's terrible. So, no, I think I I don't I don't even think I walked past the the White House. I think I walked walk past like the Senate or some other important monuments. I don't know. That was a while ago. Oh, you take the Metro, that's cool. Yeah, Metros are always good. Metros are good. Uh, well, thanks everyone for the follows. Lots of people coming in. Hopefully you're checking out some of the stuff I've been putting out on the YouTubes or just have been enjoying some of the Twitch content. So appreciate everyone that's been following. We got 3,300 followers. Whew. Almost 13,000 subscribers on the YouTube. It's been growing, which has been awesome. The 14 subs, appreciate that. Check out all the museums. Yeah, Smithsonian or something like that. That'd be cool. Oh, that's nice. A bike trail into the city. That'd be ideal. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I should put that as a testimonial. Boom. <laughs> Bearded Fed says, I'm an early Coffeehouse Blunders listener. Miss that. Oh. Well, thanks for being an early listener. Super appreciate that. Um, yeah, Danny is doing well. He's all over the place. I just was talking to my friend Luke, who's his brother-in-law, and uh, who just joined GitHub, so we're able to call on Teams. It's an official work call, if you will. And um, yeah, Danny's doing good. Chess.com's doing some is, is growing like crazy, you know, obviously. So it's been been a wild wide for, ride for him, but he's. The family's good. You can see I have my fan on because the little things are dangling. See that? That's how you know the fan's on. They're usually tucked away. Um, you know, Danny Danny and I, the question is what we may do, um, a se if they do a season two, then we would do a season two maybe of, um, of reviewing um, the show. But I also want to do chess movie reviews with him too it's hard you know i i basically ramped up so many things that i was doing uh and even in the pandemic even though it's like can't really go out and do much hey morning 3d uh even though i couldn't really do much or no one could do much right uh you know doing merge conflict blunders Nintendo Dispatch, YouTube, streaming, and then I also have a job, right? I actually have a job. I do all that stuff in my spare time. Morning, Bill. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, that was getting quite quite rough. So uh, I think with Danny, we sort of decided that, you know, he was going through a lot of growth at, at chess.com and just being able to commit to it. He, he definitely was able to, and, and I really wanted to. Uh, as much, but you know, it's hard sometimes just doing that. But we have the domain. I'm still paying every month for stores, so it's still good. We're there. Did I watch the new Loki series? No, I did not. I've been watching The Circle on Netflix. Has been fantastic. It's very, very good. Um, and then we're re-watching Ted Lasso on Apple TV Plus. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, Batch the Red is happening right now. Um, what else am I watching? Oh, there's that new um, Apple TV show that I'm, I'm um, it's like the fitness one. I forget what it's called, but it's, I, I want to start watching that one. And are we watching any other shows right now? No, I've been thinking about watching Loki because I was, I watched the trailers of it. You know, they play the trailers all the time. It looks like they're doing a very much uh, Thor-esque, Thor 3 style Ragnarok funny type of thing. But I haven't even seen Ragnarok because I watched the first Thor and I was like, I hate Thor. I'm all against Thor. Sorry, Thor. I'm not about your universe. It's too confusing, Thor. I should watch Ragnarok, though, because my buddy Jesse is just like, it's the best. We're big time Bachelor, Bachelorette fans. Uh, we're happy to see the changes taking place, but, you know, it's good. Oh, you know what else we're watching? 
we're watching we just finished cruel summers cruel summer cruel summer uh it was on hulu but i think it's also a i forget what channel it's on some channel super duper good the ending interesting I mean, it's good and bad it's like the show could be good yeah yeah i know see yeah, exactly yeah ragnarok is supposed to be awesome yeah, it's like it's like yeah, the a non Thor Thor movie is what I heard it was. We watched when I met my wife. She got me into the Bachelor Bachelorette series. Also Pierce at work, Chris Bogan. He's a longtime uh, friend in Xamarin days and uh, and here at Microsoft and and he's also into the universe. So he's kind of more like real Real Housewives. We started watching Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. It's is it good for a few episodes? I just couldn't get it get into it fully as much um for reality tv but i feel like we have a lot of friends that watch bachelor bachelorette paradise so we kind of did that quite a bit uh who has a good comment on here uh robosa said i'm converting an old delphi app whoa uh, <laughs> uh to running ipad windows and android i'll send you some shots and yeah that'd be cool yeah totally send it over to me that'd be red you can ping me on twitter yeah oh uh yeah we so we we watch live it's kind of our monday night thing for bachelor bachelorette paradise um and uh and uh we used to just watch the next day on hulu but i, I just have like a bunny ears like antenna so we, we watch it on at least on the main days 3d says i'm gonna make a, a xamarin app to control miniature video game collections out of 3d printer parts whoa cool i'm hoping but one of these, these when I get the app side, that's cool. I've been asking Frank what thing I should buy um, for stuff. Oh, Honeybobs asks, how am I doing the code reviewing stuff? Great question. Let's head to Twitter. Yesterday on Twitter, this is what I asked right before bed, 9.35, that's about bedtime. Um, I just tweeted, I said, hey, do you have any open source apps or libraries that, you know, You want me to review so there's a few that we got so i'm just gonna go through here it's so late um and let's see what we got so uh victor and i'm not doing all of them necessarily but i want to see what people put out in the world let's see so we got this firebase plugin so it's, uh yeah huawei doesn't allow google services so he's updating this firebase auth plugin um i guess it would just be an auth plugin then if it's not firebase uh oh lilo uh which is a cryptocurrency app built with xamarin forms go steven Dwyson. oh he made an mvp i literally worked on the official mvp app at the time many years ago i was helping that team do some stuff there's a demo mode that's cool uh okay we got a markdown view that's cool uh well i already did uh no, we already did the Xamarin app. But I know that you updated. I remember he updated this and like did a bunch of stuff. I thought for it recently. No, uh, yeah, I thought so. Let me look. Let me see here. Oh, we did like a UI challenge. I don't know, review a UI challenge too much. Uh, tracking pandemic stuff. Anyway, uh, so weekly Xamarin. We already did that last or a few weeks ago. The official one. A uh, good candidate. Okay, this is just Xamarin Android. Oh gosh, man, that be, would be throwback. Um, I don't even know what it is. What is it? A UI tester. There's a good candidate. All right, and then we have a build fast and robust offline data sync for your app. Noob sync, newbie sync. I don't know the name too much, but it's a bi-directional offline data sync framework. Ooh, that's cool. Fast operations downloading. I might want to just use that. Oh, interesting. Server side storage can all use. Oh. That's cool. Interesting. I'm just kind of interested in like sort of sample tests, samples, clients. I'm assuming everything is in this main page here. Uh, all local host. Uh, 
Oh, interesting. It's like very much like just, okay, interesting. It's similar to Azure mobile apps. I see, gotcha. Push changes async, that's cool. All right, um, let's open that one up. And then here's another one. This one is, allows you to bind to expressions from XAML. What? What? Is there a thing? Ooh, Zbind. What? I think there's a typo in this actually. That's cool. There are more if I refresh. Oh gosh. I guess I should put I can put this in here. Oh the refresh. Then I have to do this one. Because like there's links, so it thinks it's offensive. Okay, so there's that. Blazor query. Okay, cool. I did say any app didn't have to be anything. Blazor query. I think that's it. Right, cool. Laser query. Currently, we're going to remove jQuery dependency and make it plain JS with jQuery. I don't know if I know enough about Blazor to be able to help with that at all. Uh, I kind of feel like this app here needs a little James love. Re code review from George. We're going to try to spend like 30 minutes on each, a few of these, and let's see what we can do. I'm not gonna do the Firebase auth. I just don't know enough about Firebase. Basically, Blazor query is jQuery button C sharp. Yeah, I still don't know any of that. That's <laughs> yeah. What I need is I need a Dan Roth or John Galloway probably to help with this. Yeah, there he is. That's why. I'm not. I'm not smart enough. I'm not smart enough for this library, sir. That's my problem. Uh, all right, let's do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Clone this puppy and open it up. Uh, clone repo. Um, let's put it in GitHub D drive. Uh, let's do slash Twitch slash that. That way I can easily delete everything. Clone. Ah, so big. Okay. Uh, I just literally installed VS 2022 preview one. So, and where is my power toys? Power, power, toys. There we go. Open. Cigarettes. That's just because the UAC pop ups. Okay, so we have this. Boom. All right, cool. Now, let's just open it up here. What we want to do is we just want to run it and see if it just runs. Like, that's the code review first. It's like, oh, does it just run? Right? That's a good test in general. Um, and if we, the music too loud? I don't know. I, I turned it up on my side, but I turned it down on your guys' side. So Apple sign in, I guess I can put this over here. Do it on my watch. That's my new favorite thing is like when the Apple, the Apple login comes in. So you can like do two way factor off. Is, oh, okay, there it is. Okay. All right, let us, what I also want to do is I also want to, you know, where did my, where did my zoom it go? There we go. I feel like I downloaded it and then I, I deleted it somehow. What I want to do is I want to put this into my D drive and just have zoom it for everybody. And then I want to extract it. Boop. Oh my gosh. 64 bit version. I'm in. Um, I'm going to do options. Yeah, 150 is good, all right? Yeah, that's good. All right, cool. All right, cool. All right. Let me delete this. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we got to zoom it. Let us, let us look. There's a style. Look at this. There's a style cop. Okay, got show. We got shell. I like that. Interesting. That there's a PNG right there. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Hey, Sam. How's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Ooh, look at how tiny that code is. So tiny, oh my gosh, so small. 
two, uh, let's do 300. There we go. That's about, about what I code at. Come on, Visual Studio. You know, I need that big code. Uh, let's, let's just run it and see what happens. Look at the resource dictionary here. We got gray colors. I'm not a huge fan of that. We got that base styles, properties, labels. Oh. Mm -hmm. Custom control styles. Cool. Yeah, big fan of already. I like I like what's happening here. We have a lot of styles. Oh, that's great. And that's good. So lots and lots of styles um to be put in here so that's good uh, why is there an x you don't need an x colon app theme binding that is interesting um a build failed okay well let's look at the build view uh error list oh android level s wow, you're on the cutting edge uh why would you do that um i guess the thing i should have done is i should have created a fork actually vs code will create a fork for me yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't set this to s yet uh so here's the first thing oh oops we got a crash we got a crasher um uh, that's interesting let me kind of start i am on i'm on the first preview people so be aware be aware that's some intense music i need like a i need like a let's do chill pop couldn't find any songs okay how about chill edm perfect <laughs> all right all right let's try this again source uh, wait, where's my... What's going on here? Recent projects. Uh... Okay, interesting. Where's the... Oh, it's inside of here. I kind of hate that it's like buried inside of here too. Just it's like so deep. This this solution file kind of upsets me a little bit. But we're just doing code reviews. We're gonna get through this. And oh my gosh, <laughs> that's interesting. I wonder why did the I wonder if some stuff was sinking or something. There you go. Okay. So let us just look here, because um, if I go into his Android manifest, so see, it's set to 31. And if I unload this project and just edit it here, see, we have, we have version 11. And if we were to open up uh, Android, the SDK manager over here, what we'll see is that uh, you know, it, 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 11 is that, but that's technically API level 31, right? So the 11S, it's fine setting it to R. You can totally set it to R, that's fine. But the thing is, you need to match the version numbers. Yeah, it, so so here's the thing is, you're not really trying it out. So if you're, comp this is your compile version. So this version here means that this is the APIs available to you to use in your application. And this is like your compile against, right? But the thing that's really important is that your Android manifest should pretty much always match that all the time, right? So that's really important. So you, if you look at my Git changes, I haven't changed anything over here at all. So you're actually compiling against API 30, but what you're telling Google Play or whatever what you do is, is that you're actually... Um, going to be uh, using, you know, API 31 that you've tested against 31. Now this causing a problem because you always want it to be the same version matching, just kind of best practice there. 
Let's create a, um, a new branch. We'll just say Mops Code Review. Now, I, I need to fork it, but I think VS Code will, will fork it for me automatically if I try to push to it. Um, so let's just change this here to 30 first, okay? And that's going to at least allow me to build it. So that's good. And the other thing too here is I'm not a big fan of putting, this is here by default. It doesn't need to be. Um, I'm a big fan of putting those in in here, right? Look, look, there's already two here. So you should really decide if, if, um, if you need these permissions too. They can be removed, but you probably need internet. And do you need external storage? Are you saving files? I don't know. Um, but let's see if I can restore my new, I might just open it in 2019 only because maybe I've done this. You got it. You got to create a new branch. Yeah. Let's see if this builds. Um, I don't know why it's mad at me. Oh, interesting. Um, well, that looks good. All right. Well, that's not good. Let's close and reopen. I'm just gonna probably open with 2019 then. Let's just do that. I was being all clever and I'm like, let's just do that. But let me just do this. Open with 2019. <clears throat> okay, so that's the first thing. That's super minor, but, but it's good to remember that when you are, when you're, when you're setting up your Android project to make sure that those versions match, it also really help with, like I said, Google play, uh, and, and it could cause funky behavior on your application. So that's the thing to remember is like, why, well, why are we doing this James? Well, because it could cause funky stuff. Why are these not restoring? Hmm. Is something weird going on here? Do you have an editor config? I like that. That's important. Good work. Good work on an editor config. I wish that the default projects had an editor config and that I could tell it to do that. And I don't know why we can't um, yet. Okay, you got a environment. What is this? Uh, oh, I see that this code looks familiar. This code looks familiar. This rebuild? What is going on? Oh, interesting. Copy interesting copyright right at the top of the file. All right. What is it's kind of like the why am I having issues? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so here we go. We got current activity plugin for some reason. Why do you have current activity plugin? What is that helping you with? Um, why do you have that? Um, you definitely don't need it, whatever you have it for. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna review the, I like, so here's, so far I like this so far. We got user dialogues, Alan Ritchie. Pretty staple. I try. I try to avoid if if I can, but if you need it, it's there. I use it in many of my apps. Resizeitizer, great. That means you're going to be ready for .NET Maui. Good work. Uh, essentials forms, obviously, and App Center stuff. That's fine too. Uh, and then plugin current activity definitely don't need. There's no reason for you to have that because I have since deprecated it, it because it's all built into Xamarin Essentials, so you don't need that. Um, let's see where you're using it. Actually. It, are you even using it is the, you are, here you go. Yep. So you're just using it to get the current context. That's silly. Um, don't need it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you in it twice. Why are you ending it twice? Yeah. You don't need that. That's, that's bad. Grab that toolkit as well. Yeah. Um, so let's, <clears throat> let's just uninstall this. Okay. So the first thing is my current activity plugin used to um, you know, you, I used to need this basically, right? Um, because it would access your, your current activity, wherever you're at, it had all these lifecycle events. We, we since built that into Xamarin Essentials. So you totally don't need that at all. Ooh, why do you have your usings inside of your namespace? That just bugs me. I don't, why do people do this? 
Someone explained that to me. Now that's a personal preference, so I'm not going to change it. Uh, that's a, totally up to you. Weird, but that's just me. That's just me. You know, live your life. Oh, now here, interesting, look at this. Now, now your using statements are outside of your namespace. So what are you, what do you usually do? Inside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. All right, so I want you to be consistent, okay, in this. That's my critique. If you're gonna do it, and you're, if you're gonna have this copyright file, why do you have this copyright file and everything? I don't think you need that. Um, and also, there's, this is a copyright. You're, co you're copywriting your code. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. That feels weird to me. I don't know. Um, this, so this scares me immediately. If you have a license file, which again, you could do add existing item, and you should just link to your license file. Here it is. What is your license file? MIT license. Well, I don't know why you have a copyright because you're just saying you can use this this code. It, MIT is like you can just do whatever you want. So I, if it was me, I used to do this. Okay, let me let me go back. Back in my day. Back in my day, I used to put a copyright. I used to put the whole freaking MIT or Apache license at the top of every file. I kid you not. It used to be there. And I did that when I worked at a company, when I worked at Seton. And I don't know if we did it at Canon before that, but we used to do that. Anyways, it seems silly. And nowadays when everything's open source and doesn't really matter. Because what you're saying here, look at this. You're providing this code as is. I just think that this is extra work for you. Hey, Steven, how's it going, buddy? This again, George. This is your, this is you. It's there. Um, anyways, this is odd. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. I would move it all up it's consistent, but again, it's personal preference. I never see it that way. I never seen it that way. Again, but personal preference, that's why with you, I would delete all these. They're super scary. And if you want, like, why are you open sourcing the project? Do you want people to contribute to it? Do you want, you know what I mean? What's the rationale there? And if you do, that's going to scare people. Like, what is this for? That's just me get parent window all right you have a um i parent window locator service okay cool so what you can do here is you can actually do um xamarin.essentials.platform.activity dot dot, uh, activity current activity look at that it's built right in no need for anything extra look at that boom using xamarin essentials and then what we're gonna do is uh use expression body method oh my gosh look at that Oh my gosh, that's a uh, that's beautiful, um, and it returns an object. So interesting. That's interesting. Okay. I don't I don't love that this is an object. I guess what is it? go to definition. What are you doing here? You have an excellent one. Why do you have, are you using this at all? You're not even using it anywhere. That's it, so you're not even using this anywhere. This isn't even used anywhere. So now you just have a bunch of code and you have, what is this? Is this your linker file? Oh my goodness. That's Oh, I, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I think, what is, oh, these are docs. Oh, interesting, okay, these are docs, not a linker file, cool. Uh, anyways, I would delete this entire thing, I'd blast it away. There's no, you're not using it anywhere. Maybe you will use it in the future. Anyways, again, this is super scary. Also, this is it's confusing because then it comes up in the copyright. Hey, Luce, how's it going? Okay, so um, now that I've broken everything, let's, okay, so we got this. Uh, yep, we're gonna get rid of that. And then, all right, so you just need this. Yeah, see, what you could have done, I think what you were trying to do is like, do something here, get operating system theme. Mm, yeah, you don't even need this anymore either. Theme, theme.light. Um, what you could, uh, yeah, why are you doing? Okay, so get operating system theme. 
uh, chart view. Yeah, you don't even need this um, at all. This eye environment, you're just getting the theme and you don't need that because Xamarin Essentials has it. Yeah, now you don't need this at all. Uh, uh, yeah. application.current user theme unspecified. That's never gonna happen because it, it will default in general, but I'm gonna leave your, your code. I don't think you need this. Uh, yeah, unspecified would be light. You know what I mean? If it's unspecified, it would be light but it's never gonna happen. Uh, what well, is unspecified? It could be if it was on, so how unspecified could happen? This is the user app theme, uh, but user app theme, this is what the user has selected, but what you, what you could do is you could just check requested theme and the requested theme will basically always return a light or a dark or, or whatever. Um, it's a fallback, you know, just in case. But we're, we'll leave this in here. This is interesting. Also, you'd probably want to put a question mark in there because that could be null. And then you'd want to do like a theme.light here. There you go. I, I see what you're getting here is what, you, what you're looking for is, uh, and also why is this, this is this is at the very end. They're not gonna be able to read that comment. There you go. If they're, if they're using the system theme, determine what it actually is. Yeah, so you actually don't really need this. What you would end up doing, again, if the user was unspecified, technically, what you should say is theme equals uh, application dot current dot requested theme. This is the requested theme. And if that equals dark, then theme dot dark uh, else theme dot light. If it's unspecified, you'll you'll want a light theme, and you'll never you'll never need this. You see, what I'm saying like you don't need, don't need it. No. Device invoke get operating system theme. Don't need this. It automatically does it. Don't need it. All this code. Don't even need it. Don't even need it. Yeah. So that's built right into. That's what's cool. So that's built right into into it. So check out. I mean, again, so, so I see what you're saying is if the users, what is your preference, your theme? What are you doing? I think that you, I think, where's your theme library at? Uh, theme enumerable helpers. I, I think what you're looking for is in your app, what you want to say is like, is, yeah, what are you doing? Gets, gets, gets it, whether it's, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's look at this API here. So let's actually go into github.com slash Xamarin slash Xamarin.forms. And then you'd want like user theme, right? Is that what it is? User app theme. Um, ah, logged in, please hold. Um, Yes, yeah, the user app theme, what it's checking is if the OS theme is unspecified, use the requested theme, else return the user app theme. So this gives you a way to like you specify what you want. Trigger theme change. User app theme is unspecified, don't do anything. Uh, 
and there's like requested requested theme which again the requested theme is is for you to request it basically let's look at the docs uh you requested theme xamarin forms i always get these messed up i'm pretty sure i do uh there we go that's not helpful where's my yeah okay so detect the current theme the current system theme can be detected with the requested theme Yep, so unspecified devices using an unspecified theme, which basically means you're using light, else it's this or that. Set the current user theme. The theme used by the application can be set with the application user app theme property, which is this. In this example, the application is set to use the theme defined for the system dark mode, regardless of what it is. So if you, in your app has it for the user. So you'd only ever use the requested theme to see what's set. And if you set it, it will then return it, right? So if you set it to dark, then it will be requested. So like an, ex an example of this is if I use, yeah, I have it here actually. So here's an example is inside of, oh, please hold. uh helpers the theme so like here's what i do if 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 the user if i'm gonna like spe allow my users to specify a theme in the app then i i set the user app theme but then immediately that will set the requested theme of the application if that makes sense so what we want to do in the code Yes, a lot of code in here. Um, yes. See, no, this is wrong. So this is like if you set it itself. I think this is wrong. Anyways, we should probably fix this up. Uh, platform dot. Oops. Also, oh, you don't even need this because we're going to delete this. Get operating system theme async. You don't need any of this. So we're just going to delete. We're going to delete these files. Yeah, we're just, we're deleting some stuff here. We're interfaces. I, no, you don't need any of this. You're not using any of this. So let's delete all this stuff. All right, so deleting, gone. Minimizing code. Get out of here, code environment android i don't even no get out of here look at that ui test that's good i haven't even run the application yet you know the other thing i'm not a fan of but this is a personal preference i would put these in folders instead of just having all these files here there's just too many things same thing here you don't need this it's already abstracted boom cleaning up code less code in your app okay now let's see if this <laughs> runs let's see if it builds um uh, unspecified could mean Android device with custom Android version as some sort of third theme. Uh, yeah, but then you need to decide what that means, which means that it would, you know, basically be a light theme if it's unspecified. Theme. Yeah, so what you could do here is, what you're saying is if the requested theme are you allowing the user to set the theme of the app? I don't quite understand what you're doing. Okay, you do have a settings view. You have a set, you have a text here. You have a radio button. Okay, yeah, it's a light, light or dark theme. Set theme. 
Yeah, this is correct. Yeah. So you're setting the theme here. This is always good. Setting the requested theme, you allow that. So what you want to do is you want to say if the, yes, this, this is correct. If it's unspecified, then use the default theme. And I just messed up whatever your theme was. Let's just use the Xamarin Forms theme, right? OS app theme. Bar OS, or bar theme equals OS app theme dot light. Okay. We're going to delete that. Oh, interesting. You do a minus minus. That's odd. Oh, and you're, you're really into not using bars. So let me just do that. So this is saying, if, if, if you set it to unspecified, this is correct. Use the requested theme. Actually, you can always use the requested theme here, but that's up to, to you. But this one, I think what you're doing is like, you're getting the view inside of this chart, which is also fascinating. I don't know why you have all these, this is in here either. Um, theme equals dark. Yep. Okay. I don't know what you're doing, but you are doing something weird. If it's one, two, three, you minus minus, and then you cast it. Oh, you're setting the theme? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're, what are you doing? Are you allowing them to set it? I'm so confused. Theme, frame. Are you allowing them to set the theme or not? Set theme style, system, dark. Where are you setting this at? What are you doing? Okay. What? I'm so confused. Binding, theme light. Okay. You gotta be doing something on theme checked changed. Oh, I see. When it's changed, you are grabbing that and setting it. Okay, you're setting the style here, yes. That's correct. I see, I see now, yes. I see what you're doing. Oh, I see what you were doing. Interesting, okay, then you're setting that this is what the user specified, okay, so you're Setting this, this is fine. Okay, I, I see what you're doing now. Yeah, so when this is checked, yeah, this is fine. You're setting the user app theme, that's fascinating. Um, yeah, that's fine. So then, yeah, you get this out, it's the user app theme. And then here, this is fascinating too. You, I guess in this case, I don't think we need to do this anymore. Yeah, because if you say unspecified, then it'll use the, the, the requested theme of the OS. This would be OS app theme, Burp. which would default to unspecified, which is also interesting, but yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, okay. So then here we would say, sure, all right, cool. So we fix that up. So I think we're just getting rid of some code there. That's all, right? I don't think you need any of that junk at this point. I think you're good. Let's see what it builds. Um, assembly info. Okay, this is okay. This is fine. Again, consistency here. A little, uh, I bet I guess you have to have it there. Yeah, see that that's the only other part. Okay, now I've now I've removed all these interfaces. So <laughs> Oh, yeah, we don't need this either. Where's this coming from? Android parent Windows system. Oh, yeah, you're not using this. We're gonna delete it. Boom. 
Yeah, see, I would put probably like a services folder in here and then I would, I would make these services. I just think that that's a little bit cleaner in general. Um, I, I've been recently getting this where I don't know what's up with the file formatting. That's me. Okay, this, we can get rid of interfaces. Now we're just getting rid of interfaces and you know I'm not a fan of the interfaces in general. I don't need them. Sometimes you just don't need them. All right, we got that. Uh, where is this at? Okay, that's cool. Let's see, build, build. Oh. This is code on GitHub. Yeah, right now we are code reviewing uh, this app right here. Let me just do this. Let me just get my night bot here. And then what I can do is I go to the what, and then I'll, I'll update the current here. There you go. Boom, that's probably better. Okay. And then we should be able to build this. Resources, we got mit maps. Um, I would not have this drawable in here. That'll get resized. Oh, I don't like underscores either in file names. Uh, actually, no, it's okay. Yeah, that, that's okay. It's, that's weird, but sure. I would probably not do splash underscore screen for the XML. I'll just do splash screen lowercase. And in fact, I'm just gonna I'm gonna rename rename that just because I don't. Same with this PNG. Like I would take so this PNG in this Android app. I would go over here and I would go to the generic icon. Yeah, uh, yeah, icon generator. Then we want to go into the D drive, GitHub, Twitch, this source, this one, Android, resources, Drawable, oh, this one. And then you want to do zero, this small, and we'll do 175. Oh, you, you have to have a better image than that, right? Yeah. Um, icons old. Oh, that's not it. Uh, I bet you have one in iOS. I bet you have a big one in the assets. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. There we go. Now we're talking. Then here I would do uh, IC or splash or something. Because my assumption is what you're doing is, yeah, so you're doing, this is going to get resized uh over and over again uh when you do this and it's also low res so what we want to do here is i'm going to say rename splash screen i'll do splash background what do i call mine and <laughs> let me look actually that's probably a better idea to do What do I call my things? Yeah, splash underscore screen. Yeah, I guess, guess not bad. I guess you just did capital. I'm just a not big fan because like what happens is like it actually has to uh, rename that to lowercase when it compiles. So it's like an additional step that that it has to do, and it's not really worth it. Um, especially because you have the splash background here, and then you have these icons. Yeah. So you want to do, um, I see, let's do IC splash. Okay. We're going to download this. Let's save it. Let's save it to my downloads folder. Open it. Let's extract all. Yeah, I know, right? That's what happens. So I know that these are drawables, but that's okay. Didn't hurt. No, no, drawables never hurt anybody. Uh, and then what we're also gonna do is we're also gonna go to easy app icon and choose a file. And put that in there. And then let's see what your what is your background? There's 
just gonna delete everything. Cause I don't think, yeah, we're gonna delete everything here. Drawables hurt me? No, they're fine. But for this stuff, it's fine. I see splash. Okay, that's going to be a lot better. You do have a splash background. You're just going with black. Interesting. Um, Because that's what that looks like. And I don't necessarily think it looks like awesome. Let's do a little padding here. But I'm going to let you... Do whatever you want. That's up to you. We're gonna put adaptive icons in here now. And put this here. Cool. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to my folder. Boop. And then Android, and we're gonna add all these files in here. Boop. Oops. Yeah, we don't want that. Hold on, what did I just do? Oops. <sighs> Come on, Finder. I think it's mad at me. Oh, okay, I did everything but values. Because what we want is to look at our values. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I see launcher background. Yeah, you gotta do it, or else it looks all funky and weird on other ones. But you're good. Like here's your your black color, and here's the. You can easily now just like come and adjust this stuff, and we're gonna adjust that there. And then, so now it'll be like great because if you look at the Android instructions, like this will add all this stuff. Now you need to do is like go in here, and go into your application node. Here, Android manifest, then here. Add this in here. You don't you get rid of these. Boop. You format. And then, oh yeah, we're gonna get rid of this. This is a network state, right? Access or access network state. We delete this. And then what we do is we come into your splash activity and we delete this icon because you no longer need it. Boop. Same thing on the main activity. No longer need that. Cool. All right. Oh, interesting. Uh, this will be your. It'll be your splash. Just here. Why did it not come up? That'll come up. Oh yeah, that makes sense because it's like your drawable. But again, I think you want IC splash. Although you know. What is this? This is your notification. Ooh, I think that you don't even want that. I think you want in the Android Asset Studio, I think that there's a notification icon generator. You know what I mean? And then here you actually want this to be accurate. So this would be your icon notification because you want the notification to be this. You want to download that. And then we want to open that folder, and then we want to extract all, set small icon, decode resource. Interesting. What's the URL for the site? Oh, the Android Asset Studio. Here you go. What's the difference between putting permissions on assembly over manifest? Absolutely nothing. Uh, except for it keeps them all together and it's code first compared to like having to remember the XML. Um, but when it when you build your application, it puts it, it it'll swizzle it into the into there. So. So it'll automatically it'll automatically do that stuff for you. So you don't actually have to worry about it, uh, which is cool. 
There we go. All right. So this should be IC notification, right? I think that's good. I don't know what large icon is. Set large icon. Man, it's been a while since I did any <laughs> notification. Um, this is helpful, not. It does. We just need to recompile it here. Rebuild. Yep. You know, that site, it, it, it's it's a little out of date, but it's still definitely really good at the end of the day. Like, I still use it for a lot of stuff, um, just for resizing and doing a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, I might have messed up your notification. So, I apologize if I do. Why is it not coming in? Oh, it's still building. Uh, the other thing too is you can delete these uh, files. You no longer need these at all in your app. So you can just delete these because now they're built into Xamarin uh, Forms too. So actually you can just delete this stuff and it'll be fine. You no longer need this layout folder. We don't even include it anymore. You just delete it. Only reason you would need it if you need to override something. We shouldn't have to. So that's good. A lot of, sometimes this stuff gets stuck around. You know what I mean? Why is this so upset at me? I don't think it's actually mad at me. Cool. It's cool that you have a, that. You got a dialogue service. Oh, you got I dialogue service, a notification service, market prices, sockets, sockets, sockets. Yeah, this is always. Um... Yeah. It's always interesting when there's like a dialogue, a dialogue service. Oh, okay, that did work. Starting to debug. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works, people. And we'll move on to the next. Boom! Splash screen. That still works. I actually think that the black on black actually looks kind of cool. Not, not. Yeah. Why is why? What's going on here? What's up with this? Uh, what's up with this icon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's your, uh, where's the other one? Oh yeah, this one, I guess doesn't have a. I didn't break it, that's good. Okay, okay. What are you, what is, uh, okay, I'm, I need to. Okay, so here's what's happening. So you have only a few views and what is going on? You have an app shell and you have flyout, and the flyout is disabled. Where's your application at? Okay, so if if it's running on iOS, use App Shell. Wait, what? What is going on here? You don't. What is going? What is this? What's going on here? This is not correct. You do not need this. This is not. That's not accurate. That's not correct. Um, yeah, you don't even need this thing anymore. We no longer use this. We don't have the previewer, but yeah, it makes sense. You put your codes in here. That's not great. Um, uh, for your startup, you definitely want to have a build script in App Center to do that. You can take a look at some of my examples, but yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want these in here. I mean, it would just allow other people to send data to your analytics and crash reporting, which would kind of stink. So definitely would, would not put those in there. It's a little bit too late, but you know, there's that. Yes, yeah, so I don't know why you had this here. This is uh, fascinating because Didn't I just, okay, we just ran it. Yeah, they give you that example code, yeah. And I don't understand, where's your flyout menu? You disable it, so you don't want the flyout menu and yet you're loading all of these views. 
And why is Dogecoin not bigger? <laughs> oh, interesting. That's, oh, I see. You set the it based on the theme. That's cool. Yeah, I'd put it in App Center build. Yeah. That, that happened to me once. Settings. What are you... Uh... Um... I, uh -huh. Okay, so man, I'm so confused. Also, th this won't take any effects because you don't have the library in there. Why? What is this launcher for? I'm just sitting in here for. You just have a PNG just sitting around. Um. Whoa! Look at all these SVGs. Holy bananas! Uh, that's cool. Title bar. Okay. You have a home view. And let's say I go and click on settings. How am I navigating? There's your page, settings view. Route is settings. What are you doing? What are you doing? How are you navigating? Oh, route settings. Okay, that's your route. So you are, how are you navigating there? I'm so confused. Um, app shell dot current dot. How are you navigating? Uh, okay, well, let's look at the home view, which you should have a settings. You have a title bar. Why do you have a title bar? Oh, interesting. Why are you doing that? Oh, I'm not a fan. Um, anything attached, if you have a custom title bar, it, I would say, yeah, here you go. Okay. So you have home slash symbol, home tapped, settings tapped. Yes, Fred. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, okay. This is, this is fine. Um, you know, you don't, uh, okay. Um, Okay, so, okay. Okay. All right, so, you, okay. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, okay. Uh, this is interesting. You have these, you have these things in here. You don't really need this. Um, you, you, you can do shell dot current dot register or uh, route shell what is it uh register route route shell dot shell dot route current dot how come i don't know this code yeah uh well i mean you can shove anything in there but i feel as though you don't really need to Routing, shell dot routing. Thank you. Uh, dot routing dot. Oh, <laughs> uh, there you go. So yeah, what you'd want to do here is the this is the route. So, for example, I would just do like you know, uh, well home home you can keep in there, right? Then you can do um, uh, type of. I think that's what you need. And then you do chart view like that. Yeah, system type. So uh, I just what 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 it does is it makes it weird in a way that favorites is spelled wrong, but that's okay. I'll give you a pass. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. So like what you can do 
is we register these routes and then what you do is you, you don't need to worry about this stuff here and you just put a you can just put a, a shell piece of content in here right just like this and then we're done now your shell is super small and you're good to go um and then you don't really have to worry about this uh and this and this should still work so we're just setting this up in the code and like you can definitely do these hard coded strings. The other thing you can do is you could just do like name of chart view, name of settings, name of favorites, and then that would work as well. But th this should work the same. You just have one shell content. And this is kind of like a blank blank app, which is like, oh, I have this shell content. Like it should just work the same overall. And um, there you go. Now, the other thing though, that I don't like and I'm not gonna lie, is that on your uh, home view over here, you see you have this. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a fan of that. And I'm not, oh, you guys, you do need to disable that. Okay, so, uh-huh. Oh, interesting, I see what you did, that's, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, so, um, yeah, okay. Because here's the thing: you want it, to, you just want everything to be standard. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you. You want everything to be standard, okay? Because it's just better. <laughs> it's just better. It's just better. Um, I guess we can do shell. Oops. Where's my home? Oops, where's my app shell? And um, fly out. Okay, so it'd be gone. No, it is. Com it's completely customizable. You can put anything you want inside of this. A hundred percent. You can completely customize it. The other thing that you're you're sort of missing here is actually really important. So the the problem that you're running into is that you don't have the styling for the shell, and you need this here. Okay. It's going to be inside the uh, shell dot resources. Hey, and this is okay. Yeah, I'm critiquing, we're critiquing this, but it's all fine because some of this stuff's a little, you know, a little confusing. And that's all right, too. Uh, I'm not going to lie. So it's okay. I'm not mad at at all. This is totally fine. Now I have those in there, so let's refresh it. How do you center the markets on? It depends if you want to, to be honest with you. Um, however, it is very easy to do. In fact, in my Peloton app, I show you how to do that, which is right in here. You can do that because on, let's say the uh, classes page, not the classes page, featured page. I have one on my ooh, profile page. There we go. Uh, nope, I don't have it there. Where is it? Oh, profile, profile overview page. Yeah, you can set shell title view, and then you just put the label right in the middle there. However, I would say in this case, I would not even do that. Why is this color not correct? This should have changed that color. Why is it not?
in here. Yeah, so on any page, you can just set the title if you want for the default views. The, the biggest bonus though, is that you will get style, static style based on base page. All right, let's see if this works. Go to the app sample. Oh, unless you set the navigation page, we shouldn't have, I don't think. I like that you're using styles. That's really good. That's positive overall. Um, yeah, you don't even need to use this X type, I don't think either, but that's okay. Why is this all blue? Mm hmm. What else have I broken? Um, hmm. What's well, interesting? You have like a you have a bunch of stuff. You have a search bar. What is that all in here? Row. Oh, I see interest. Oh, interest. I didn't even know that that was in there. Okay. Um, Hey, thanks for the follow. Um, what else do I have? Hold on, let me see here. Uh, resources. This is correct. Mm -hmm. I think I need to set the hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's like different theme. That's funny. Um, that's what happens on every single website. It's not the same. Um, why is it being weird? GitHub in light theme mode for some reason. I don't know why. It is due. Why is it not? Um. Why is that color there? I'm very confused. I'm very confused. See, ideally we would get rid of this. Huh. 
this is a, a box. You probably want to make the background a different color. And that, I don't understand why. So you have here, you have like light mode would be like, you have it up here. Let me just steal that control. I mean, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm just going to see. I'm just going to see what. Yeah, there you go. And then here we can do command and then you could say binding go to settings command like that Let's stop it and then here we can do Public, I async. Look at you and your comments. Um, go to um, interesting. Uh, go to bop, 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 settings command. And then here, what I would do is I would do a private I async command. Go to Things coming in. Yeah. And then you would do like like that. And then you can actually just do like let's just do async task to settings. And you can say here. Wait, shell dot current dot go to. I'd actually set up a settings. Yep. Oh, interesting. Oh, you really want this dot? Okay, I see. There you go. Need this dot? No, that's not correct. Interesting. I will use your this on your methods. That's very odd. Why I didn't uh, wait? Didn't know about that. Yeah. So this is saying if this is null, then create a new one. Else return this. So it'll it'll create a new one there. That's a C sharp eight feature. Yeah. Which is good. Uh, navigates to settings. There you go. But do you need? Yes, you do. Because um, I would say if this is null, then so if if you do this, all right, let's zoom in. Okay, so if you did just this, this would say if this is null, just return a new one here. Once you add this, this will set it to this. Right, so this says if go to settings command is null, then create and assign a new one. So that way in the future, if you call it again, it will always, it won't be null next time. So if you do this, it'll be null next time. If you do this, it won't be null next time. The more you know. Um, all right. Now, I don't know why your bar is being weird. I am puzzled by the navigation bar, 100%, why this is this color.
where's my uh, home page? Go to settings command. Oh, did I spell it wrong? Uh oh. <laughs> I put it in the wrong place. Ha 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 ha. That's funny. I'd probably have a base view model. I'd actually put it here, to be honest with you. Just because it's like, always go there, right? Like, why not? And then here, that way you just always have a settings command on all of them. Let's try it again. Yeah, I did, yeah. Now it's on every view model because everything is a view model base. Now, here's the thing. Had you been using X data type, this would have been caught and it would have sped up your entire application. So you want to set this X data type everywhere you possibly can. And I'm about to put a video that kind of like describes this a little bit more, but the X data type is going to give you a very, very nice uh, way of doing this. The only thing we'll need to set is, is on this, on this here, on this, uh, inside of this thing. And I'm assuming this is going to be a, uh, I don't know what it is. It's interesting that you have local and VM. They're doing the same thing. So that's actually not accurate. Local would be your page. Let's do VM. There we go. That's better. And then you should also want to do a new XMLNS models. There you go. And then you could do on uh, the binding X uh, data type. Now you can do X colon null here, and then that will just like ignore it, which would basically be the same as like, I don't know what it is, but you definitely want it to be like uh, models colon and uh, ooh. oh uh, what is okay so it's not models interesting so we're looking for symbol string last price what does that exist in Market price, what is this? What is this? Go to definition, market model. All right, market model is inside of markets. All right. That should work. So it'll be compiled binding. So it'll be faster. And also, it is mad at me about something. Oh, I didn't bring in the namespaces. Okay. Oops. Oh, I forgot to bring in. You don't really need a lot of this stuff. All right, James, can you do this? All right. That should work. Wait, I just checked that. It seems like checks if the left hand is not null, use it, else use the right hand. Yeah, so correct. That's correct. Yeah, so so 
this is going to be null, right? The very first, and I spelled it wrong. Nobody caught me. <laughs> so let's uh, let's rename this. So here's the thing. This is null, and this will be null the first time it comes in. If I only use this, this will always remain null because it's going to return a new one, right? So it's like, if if it's null, then do this. So it'll just create a new one because this will never not be null because I'm not setting it anywhere else. So what I have to do is I have to use the assignment that says, if this is null, then assign it to a new async command. And then the next time this comes in, this won't be null and then it will return it. Does that make sense? Workflow is wrong for this one. Because we want to assign this. You know what I mean? That's the important part is like, we don't want to create new async commands over and over and over again. We just want to create one once. That's the key. That's the ticker, if you will, the stock ticker. Something weird is going on. Boom. Inside the settings view. How come this doesn't return to So this here, you're never assigning test. This wouldn't return to. This would return. No, this is because you, your test here. You'd want this to be test two. That's correct. Test never gets assigned to anything. Correct. Yep. You'd want to put test two in there, but if you wanted to be test, put the question mark in there and drop this thing here. Yeah, correct. Dom is correct. Dom is correct. Let me go to my settings view again here. Let's do is get rid of that. Does that work with my hot reloads? Is my hot reload even connected? I don't know. Go. Okay, then you also definitely want some like padding on this page, man. Um, let me get rid of this. I do not know why my, my XAML hot reload has like not been working for me in this build for some reason. I don't know why. I do not know why it's not working. Oh, yeah, it's all mad because of, oh, you do set, oh, I do set it here, okay. Oh, why is this mad? It's mad about something else. Oh yeah, this page does get mad because I have a weird opacity thing. Yeah. Yeah, the I mean those those the question marks and question marks can definitely be a little bit funky, so totally understand that. I don't know why that error is still there. Probably need to close and reopen. Oh yeah, now like oh there we go. I don't understand why. It's also interesting that like it's in dark mode right now, which it really shouldn't be because this is not on a an older device. I guess we go settings. See, now we're back. It's normal back. That is like a thousand times better. Um, now, I don't know why this bar, why this bar is this color though. Um,
Yeah, you need um you need some padding on these puppies. That is for sure. Where's your frame at? I know that my my code that does this messes it up. Why do you have um Oh, that's why, because I said it's a dark. Um Are you setting something to like use? You're like making it not visible if it's not available. What are you doing? What are you doing? No. Where is the um? Like where is your? An arrow. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. How come this is not visible? This radio is visible. Oh, system theme supported. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Actually, I would, um, I would always put this here, to be honest with you, just because there is a low power mode. And in low power mode, you, it may set it, even though like the operating system might not support it at low mode. So there is a possibility like on older versions of Android, I would just always set it there. Just always put it there. Um, I feel like it's just a little bit unnecessary to, 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 to not put it there in my opinion. So oh, what is going on? Hold on. I'm very confused into what is happening inside of here. on uh, yes you have these interesting here so. okay so we're gonna take a look at, I'm pretty much all over the place in this <laughs> in this thing, so I apologize. Yeah, so this is about correct. So I don't think you need any of this stuff in here. Yeah, see, this this isn't your fault. It's okay. Correct. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Now this one is the window background, so it actually is, it is, I, I don't know why it's not coming up, but it is actually this file, so it's actually correct. Um, yeah, see, the other thing you'd want to do is under your values, colors, that's fine. I guess I do have these files in here, but I guess you don't, shouldn't need them. Those are the toolbar. Maybe let me, let's go into my git changes. Let me just undo the, the deletion of, the deletion of, the other thing you, there's a few other things you need to do actually. You need to watch the rest of my video on theming and setting the status bar color. That'll be the other thing you'll need to do for sure um, to get it consistent. But where's my, let's undo this. 
and then Where I don't need these in here anymore. I'm like 99% sure. I'm just gonna double check my Android app over here. I guess maybe I do need it. Maybe that's why. I thought we got rid of those. Maybe they didn't get rid of them. Maybe that's my fault. If so, let's try this again. Yeah, light, dark action bar would make sense. Yeah, this there's all there's like dark there. Yeah, see ya. Have a good one. I'll put it up on the YouTube when we're all done too. Uh, so definitely check that out. Yeah, so there's a whole nother, like I probably won't do it, but you can go to here. It's gonna yell at me. Ah, there we go. You wanna watch this one, the dynamic one. This is pretty good uh, to watch. So you can change that up there. Why is this not changing colors? Mm -hmm. So what I actually like to do on this one is on your settings view, what you can do is actually do auto. So here you do auto, auto, auto. Okay. And then in the middle, and then what you do is like, this would be grid dot column one, two, Three, then they're all in the middle. And they'll be right next to each other, if that makes sense. And then your frames, they need a little bit of love. I don't know why the status bar is blue and it's really upsetting me. And I am i don't understand what is happening <laughs> on this thing. Where are your favorites even at? I don't even understand that. How come this tap thing isn't working? Did I break that somehow? Hey, look at that. Um, but this shouldn't be blue and I don't, I'm getting very upset that it's, it's blue, but there's that, uh, oh, enable favorites on the, oh, you should change that green to manage. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Same thing here. You interesting that you did it that way. I would just always have favorites out, but that's me. What do I know? Um, and then, yeah, you have like a, uh, where's the settings view model? Yeah, you don't need it. You just normal, just favorites. Go to async. Yeah, you basically never need any of that stuff. But you have home and then back to home tapped. Home tapped chart view. Oh, I see. I messed up something because. Oh, wait, false. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. And you, you, like, ideally you see, you can see where I'm going with this, which is like, I would just use the standard navigation that's in here. And I wouldn't, um, I don't know why this is not applying. Did I do something wrong? Um, I don't know why this bar is blue and it's upsetting me heavily, um, but it shouldn't be, is what I'm saying. So, oh, I see, these are your favorites. So you should be able to get rid of this. Just go back. Don't have a settings up there. Like if I'm in my favorites, just let me go back and then I can go back. I don't need to, you don't need, it's too complex. You're adding too much complexity in here for that. 
This frame is upsetting me though, and I need to change it because these frames, I think you have a style here. And then where's your frame at? Settings theme frame. You really need some padding on this stuff. Just need more padding. And this list. Unloved. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, how do I manage these? Is that in there? The No, it's all good. Yeah, so just use the standard stuff, right? And then that'll be great. Um, and see, so then this page just needs like a little bit of, of uh, it just needs a little bit of padding. That's all you need. You just gotta give it a little bit of padding. Um, you can just put it on this on this grid. And then just do like uh, 10. And that'll, that'll fix that up. And then you can go here. This is fine. Yeah, I think you just need some, like the dark theme needs that. that. Same thing here, like this on this page, what is happening on this home page? So this is happening because, oh, there's a ooh, swipe view, okay. Um, we're gonna do here, we're going to take this frame, we're just gonna wrap it in a grid, okay. It didn't do anything, but I'm gonna put some padding on here. And now we're gonna see the shadows on it. And we're just gonna do 10.5. There you go. Look at that. Look how much better that is already. Okay. Um, Doge, there we go. I don't know why this is blue and it's super upsetting me. Ah. Um, oh, sorry. Anyways, that's what it looks like. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Um, so that, that just, just that little padding there, just see how it's a lot better. So if I didn't do that, this is what it looked like before. See how it's cut off? Just a little bit in there. Anyways, it's absolutely good. Look, it's a frame, it's doing stuff. Um, that's great. Why is this not, why is it blue? It's very upsetting. I am very upset. I don't understand. Oh, snap. Um, Oh, I did it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so there we go. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, cool. I set you up for success. Look at that. It totally worked. Yay. So I needed to set the shell content to have the same thing. This is going to be so much better. That needs to not be green. Uh, <laughs> um, also, it's confusing you're using a settings here. No real need. You can just have a tap event on there in general. Okay. But look at that. Oh, yeah. And then this. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, oh, it did work, but for some reason, for some reason that didn't adjust. Interesting. Yeah, 
You can also set like custom. You can you can you can change stuff. Like green and blue match the logo. Oh. Yeah, then you can change all the colors in the app, but I just think it's a little strong, that's all. Um, maybe this needs a refresh here. Yeah, this worked for me when I did this based on that shell content. Like they all should be shell content. I, I usually have never done uh, this, this looks better. I don't know why it's not changing. That's it's weird. Um, that is for sure. Uh, this looks better. See how that's centered now inside of here. That looks good. I don't know why that's not changing, but it could be because maybe it did need to be in a fly out like that. Does it need to be like that? And then like everything else stays inside of it? Question mark, and then the file is disabled. Let me see what this does. Fascinated. Favorites is a drag and drop. Oh, interesting. Could it be a bug with shell? No, it, it worked in my other apps though. If I look at all my other apps, it should adjust accordingly. Style base page. Background color. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, there we go. I think I just needed a refresh. That's all. Because I think it just, I was in hot reload, so it didn't apply that. So now it's good. Cool. All right. I feel very good about your app. I'm going to leave it at this state. And here's my recommendation. So, so far, I'm liking what I see. Uh, this, uh, you can improve this a little bit. You could center this text a little bit inside of here. You could round those corners a little bit more on the theme. All right. Um, these are tricky, these drop downs. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of them, but there's really nothing else you can do. You can change this accent color by setting inside of your resources, values, uh, styles. You can set this accent color here. That would be good. I'm also going to remove this out of here. You don't need that. That's good. Um, I would, I would change these. I just think that the green is a little bit odd to me. I would just not set it maybe um i would look at maybe some different styles oh interesting that is cool um it's not intuitive though I'd, I'd almost like it to just be like a because what happens when it's down here right it's like how do i how do i you know move it up what i would rather have on this page is like um, you know, the favorite should be stickied in a grid. You know what I mean? This, this needs a little bit of, of love. I, I, I don't think, I think the drag and drop is overkill in general. Cause like, I mean, if I'm down here, how am I going to move it? Uh, but I would say this, I think, or oh, I think it's, I think it's too much, uh, it's cool, but I don't know if it's necessary. That's my thing. Or I would just make it so I could, I would put these all in a grid. And then if they're a favorite, I just have a checkbox on top of it. That's my code review for you. Get rid of all this, put it inside of a collection view or a flex layout that goes through all of these and put a little checkbox if they're favorited or not. Easy peasy. That's all. Uh, Oh, then or oh, so you're ordering them too? Um, yeah, that uh, that's gonna make it so hard to order them in general. Um, I see because you want them to be ordered in the list. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's tricky. Um, just double or double tap to, to move. 
or something. I don't know. You can also remove this selected event and change this color. But it's a little bit weird. Um, how does it work now? It's only my favorites, I see. I would almost allow you to drag and drop here in the order that I want on this screen, personally. But yeah. I would also put the name of them on here too. That's one thing I would put is I would put the name because like when I go to like when I go to like coin market cap and I look at the coin market, like I my Dogecoin like looks like this with a, the Doge in the background and not just this D. But I know these are probably official tickers. I would put the name on it in general. Um so the other things I would change, the manage, I would get rid of this thing. Just use the standard back. You're set up for success here. You're gonna need to look at my 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 how to change the status bar color thing. Um in this in this here, just put the app info in the about. You don't need to put it in there. Just put it below, get rid of this gear. You're looking good there. Um I don't know what the, uh, these are notifications. Oh, I see. Um there's other screens. How am I, I'm missing other screens, right, of this app. Alerts, charts. Oh, I need a tab on one. I broke something. What did I break? Uh, obviously. Uh, okay, how do I... Where's my home? Oh. Yeah, what is... What is... Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Um. Oh. Ooh, interesting. Um... Yeah, let me let me fix it or else it's going to be like kind of weird. So you have this as a selected item. And then you also have it going to swipe alert action command. Yeah, why is that not being triggered? Oh, yes, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I don't think you need the slashes. That's also interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily do that. I understand why you did that, but I would have not done it. Uh, that's okay. Two, two, four. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Go to async. There we go. Then we have the back button. Look at that. Yeah, and then you can just, yes, yeah, so you can get rid of all this. You don't need settings. You, so you don't need settings on these pages because, yeah. See, it's just, you, you, it's a little, you need to do it. Just let, let it handle it for you. You know what I mean? There's no need for settings on those pages. One settings. And then... And then I think you're good. I think you're good there. Ignore alerts for now. Okay, gotcha. So you could... You get where I'm going with this, you know, a little bit. You know, I, I think that when I look at this, there's a lot of nice things I see. Like, I do like that there's a tick review that's like reuse, a bunch of bindable properties. That's all good. You know, co you know, components based. Splash screen looks good. Um, now it's back to a blue. That's you want to look at my code to set this 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 color though. Um, so don't worry that it's blue. You're going to set it later and you're going to look at my, my code, how to do that there. Um, but yeah, so now it's good. That's good. Loads this view. Cool. Oh, you know what you can also do on this chart view is you have interesting again. I think you're just going to put like a, 
There you go. Just a margin of uh, five around that puppy there. That just gives it a little bit of oomph. Just there. That's good. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're looking good. And all we really care about is Doge anyways. So there we go. All right. I'm going to now attempt to commit code. And I think what I want to do, and I think that this works. Let me open this folder. And let me go into here. Let me open this with code. Okay. And then what I want to do is go into here. I'm going to say uh, stuff from live stream. <laughs> right? All right. And then we want to um, commit that. And then we want to push and see, this is cool. It says, there's no upstream. Would you like to publish this branch? Yes. And then it's going to notice. I thought I could. Oh man, I thought it would. Hmm. Dang it. I thought it would create the fork for me. Um, dang it. Okay. So I should be able to do fork. And let's go ahead and add the remote. Get it. Oh, maybe GitHub Desktop has it. That'd be, yeah. So let me do rem remote, add remote. Okay. James. And then I think I could do push to James. I mean, it's not that that shouldn't be too, too bad, I think. Let's see if that worked. Or, or, or oh, no, there's. Awesome. Done. Now don't just go pull this in. You probably want to work from it and go from there. Um, yeah. But anyways, I think that's a little bit, you know, that should hopefully, you know, new icons. Um, you know, uh, you, you want to set this new stuff there. Uh, this connecting thing's fine. The toast. This is good. We, we've, we increased the, the font and the live reload, so that'd be good. Yeah, besides that, I think you're looking fine, to be honest with you. You know, I think it's looking pretty good. You got these, I just leave the system is fine. That's fine. You definitely do want to see how I did the title bar up top. You want to do that on iOS and Android and I have code in there. Community toolkits adding that in too. So it should be very simple too. Maybe it was GitHub desktop that I was using. You might be right. But yeah, anyways, I think you're good there. Um. Anyway, so there's kind of like a I don't know, was that helpful at all? I don't know if this was good at all. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So I don't know if this is, I mean, I did the weekly Xamarin one, but this was more of a critique and, and doing stuff inside the code. <laughs> hey, Sparky, how's it going, buddy? So I, I don't know if this is beneficial at all. I don't know if this is good or if this is bad or anything like that. Um, hopefully this is okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's an app. Let's see what else we have. Um, hopefully you can kind of think, see through some of my process of how I'm looking at code and how I'm like analyzing it a little bit here and there. Yeah. You know, just looking at some code here and there, uh, is good. Uh, let's look at this markdown. This is cool. All right, let's do a, this branch is 59 commits ahead of, oh, this was. Oh, this was the markdown view. Okay, cool. Um, let's clone this one. Yeah, I agree. I have been streaming for two hours. <laughs> I got into it too much. That's for sure. Um, I think I think you're right. I think it's definitely. At least I have some stuff that I can do here. Time limits. I I got too too into it. 
Uh, but this is good. I'll do it like maybe next week too. That'd be good too. So luckily I don't have like any meetings today. So that's going to kind of work a little bit more. So let's look at this one. I think, yeah, I need a time. I need to, yeah, there you go. I need, I need to have capped it at 45 minutes or something. So I can do three, 45 minutes. And I'll do a countdown timer next time. That's what we'll do. Um, and that would be ideal. So let's look at the markdown view. Um, but it'll be fun. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, this is great. Um, ooh, what? What's going on here? Okay. Why is there a packages.config? Oh, I do not like that. Uh, said me. What is, why, who's going on here? All right. So are there no samples in this repo? Oh, there are samples. Here you go. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at the sample and I'm noticing something very weird. I noticed that there is already package references here and yet a package config. Let's do a new branch. I'll say Mott's uh, code review. Let's see how far we get on this. I'm looking at this code. I just like to open the code a little bit. Let me just look at the code a little bit. Let me just bop around a little bit, right? All right, first thing here. Oh, live share, that'd be cool too. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah, I like that. You can get send an invoice my way, or you can buy me a coffee. You can totally do that. Um, I'm looking here. This is the 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 Xamarin Forms Markdown has Markdig, which is great. Donna Sander Library 2.0, and it has this Markdown control. Okay. So here's the thing. One, you're relying on Xamarin Forms 3.5. One, you have this packages config. You just want to delete that. Okay. You want to get that out of your life. It's gonna make you miserable. And uh, the same thing is, why does this exist? Um, if I look at, there's the samples, it's already there. Let's delete that. That has no place being here at all. It just should be gone. Do I take Starbucks gift cards? Um, maybe. Um, let's look here. Yeah, oh my, oh my gosh. Okay, so we wanna right click on this package and we wanna migrate it to package reference and we wanna just, be out of the, be out of this game, okay? A hundred percent. Just want to get out of it. And additionally, I'm seeing all sorts of issues with with a lot of NuGet packages that are brought into the samples. Now this is the samples, not the library, but I do see they're using Skia Sharp here. So let's see on the NuGet here. Uh, let's look at uh, Skia Sharp. Now they are on. Oops. Skia Sharp SVG is what they're using. Okay, interesting. Now they are on. Wait, what? Oh, 160. Okay, they're on 160. That's good. All right, um, here is what I would say. Let's just close a bunch of oh, VS codes updating. Great. Uh, yeah, Fo one, I would remove Fody. That's just me. So look at all this stuff that just got brought in here. That's bad news bears. So we want to, <laughs> we want to unload this project, save it. Um, I'm going to open up this Android project and edit it. Boop. All right, so I'm going to update this to 11, check. Um, we probably need, we don't need this stuff. We don't need any of this stuff or this stuff at all. Any of these, so if this, if this goes, if this happens to you, you can just remove all this stuff. You, you don't need any of it. Just boom, get out of here. And then also, if you ever see these imports, you definitely don't need those. Those are bad news bears. So you want to get rid of that. It's just going to mess up your day. It's going to mess up your day. That's looking good. Okay, so let's go ahead and reload this project. Again, so we're, we're, we're freshening it up here. So now we have package references 
That should come into here. Ooh, interesting. There's a, yep, that's correct. We're gonna do the same thing on iOS because it also has packages config. Get rid of your packages. We don't want you. Get out of here. So, paired programming, that'd be fun. Yeah, I could definitely do that. I think live share would be great for that. You have to make sure the sessions are open and running. I'd have to back channel them a little bit more, yeah. So, that is for sure. Um, all right, it's uninstalling packages. Pack, oh, that's old, so you basically want this. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, cool, and then we do this, and then we, we unload this puppy. Let's unload the project, let's save it. And then let's go ahead and edit it. And again, we're gonna look at this project. Now I understand that, that this is just a sample project, but, but to me, it's the whole kit and caboodle. You want everything, someone coming into this project and be like, oh, this looks great, look at this. And you wanna get rid of this, okay, cool. Now here's the conundrum, all right? Now, this developer has decided that 350 of Xamarin Forms is what they want to use as, as a minimum version. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, you don't want to just update to 5.0. What I would say is I would force people at the minimum version of 5.0. You got to be on 5.0 at this point. There's no reason not to be. You don't, it, you're going to run into all sorts of other issues. Just just trust me here. You just just do that. If you're creating a library, 5.0, that's the base. Everyone's on it. Your life is going to be happier. Just it'll be good. Again, I'm not a big fan of using Fodi and this other stuff in a sample. I think the the the, the reason for that, it's your app, it's your sample, but I mean, this is so simple. Like, why are we adding all this other complexity in there? Um bu, 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 bu. are there any plans for updates, patches given work going into Maui? For 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 Xamarin Forms? Yeah. There'll be patches, there'll be supported until the next year. There's actually a, a patch in the works currently for, for pinning uh Android uh stuff, which will be good. All right. This looks good. Xamarin Forms, you got the versions, got Mark Dig, blah blah blah. Yep, yep. So there'll be some it'll be supported until November 2022. You'll be good to go. Uh, it's interesting that the new spec is inside of this file. You don't even need a new spec anymore because it should be inside of a uh, right click pack. And when you run that through CI, you should, should not need that. Uh, let's, I'm not, I'm just gonna look at some stuff here first. Let's see if this rebuilds. Yeah, so you're good. Yeah, yeah, you're good for a while. So I haven't really changed it. Like I said, I just changed the dependencies of this. Um, I might need to close. I might need to do a full clean here. I might need to close and reopen this because I just changed a lot of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't know what they're doing because this package is only singly targeted. So that's interesting. Let's try this again. Sources, Markdown Viewer. A lot of people use XAML. Okay, cool. Um, question is, did I break everything when I just like rip stuff out? Shouldn't have. There we go. Now they're in there. Okay, cool. So this should work. What emulator is this? I pie one. Yes, let's debug it there. So, uh, nope. Samples cannot be compiled. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at the configuration manager and see that this one is not set to, to build or debug. So that's probably important. It's probably. This project was probably created on VS uh, Mac a while ago, and it was missing some of the the important bits of um, some of the just configuration here to, to debug here. Okay, so it's mad um, at me. Okay, so great. So let's go ahead and prop into the properties. Oh yeah, I 
just changed a bunch of stuff. So we can just say 21 and 11. All right. Um, that should be fine now. Okay, let's rebuild that. That's just a sample, so it's not a big deal. Um, but let's look at what it looks like. I should have just ran it, but classic James just going through and changing stuff. Image extension. Oh, interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Web requests render the SVG. Oh. Interesting. Okay. How would you go about getting the configuration updated implements? New project and copy and paste. The configuration. Which configuration are you talking about, George? I usually just create a new project and like move things over. Um, it just depends. Usually I'm not changing too much. See, and the, I, I would, okay, here's the other thing is you also want to, for this, this is what I would recommend if I manage my NuGet packages, I would do an update and on my samples over here, I would install the latest version. Okay, so that way you get the hot reload. Uh, oh, um, yeah, so inside of, so Visual Studio for Mac, it may fix it now, but when I right click and I go to configuration manager, you want to make sure that like the deploy for Android is set to true. There's some stuff that, uh, automatically happens on Visual Studio for Mac that like knows how to deploy if Android's a setup or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's all you want to do. And, and, and it's a very minimal change. Oh, come on. Clean. I go into here and I look at this. Like this is all it added. It added like one line of code to basically set the deploy to zero on this configuration. And that was it. So. You just let Visual Studio on Windows handle it for you, but you can also go on Mac, there's a configuration manager, and that will also work too. Hey buddy, how's it going? Christo's in the house. I saw you were streaming earlier, how'd it go? There's a theme, this is interesting, there's a whole theme. Looks like this entire markdown view is rendered with Skia, no, it's not Skia Sharp. So a few things about this is I would, all right, so there's a few things in here that I would do right away. We do have an editor config. Okay, that's good. Perfect. I'm a big fan of having editor configs. Ooh, we added a Donna interactive notebook. That is cool, very nice. Big fan of the .NET interactive notebooks. All right, cool. So anyways, this is a big markdown file that's not rendered. Okay, cool. There's all these settings in here. Cool. Source. Oh, interesting. Oh, look at that. So it basically renders all this. And I think for images, it is, that's interesting, it's a little bit funky there, but sure. It is rendering some stuff. Okay, so link style sheet. Okay, so markdown view. I mean, this is all pretty good. I would use lambdas on the entire project. Problem solved, so much better, so much prettier. Um, again, that's, you know, to each your own. Again, interesting, look at this. Using statements inside the namespace. My mind is blown. This is two projects in a row. This is two projects in a row. However, not consistent. Not consistent. Um, I 
So that bugs me in here. So I don't, I don't like to mess with it, but I will say like, just give me some consistency, okay? That's all I want in my life. Look, it even is asking if I want to move it to the names or move this something to the namespace. Mine were only outside when assembly declaration is there because it has to be, or else you could type the entire thing in too, um, which is correct. So there's a markdown view and, oh, interesting. Okay, so navigate to link. Yeah, so you would probably um, want to do something here, which is I personally would take it another dependency on Xamarin Essentials over here, okay? And we definitely want that to be installed. Perfect. Okay. And if these samples are really old, they may not even have them. They don't. That's sad. Let's go to our let's go to our manage then. And And then we want to go to docs slash Xamarin slash essentials. And then we want to do this nice. It's like, you don't have to do any of this in the new one, but you do want to just grab this little bit of code right here. Just this one. That's all you need over here. Okay. Perfect bundle. Yeah, this is old because there's this bundle in here. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so we look at this view. So the first thing we noticed is, all this is interesting, there's an action, but uh, okay, so you definitely want this to be a, um, a browser dot open. Okay. Then you don't need to create a new URI. You can just pass it the string. All right, so open async. All right. That's fine. Um, okay, lots of globals. I, I'm not a huge fan of just creating stuff randomly here, but sure. Um, We've changed everything to little lambdas. We have new bindable properties. Most of this stuff is like fine. Make this a read only. I guess I'm just like, gonna, I'm just gonna like plop in a few things that like you know, Visual Studio is recommending. Um, there's a theme setting, uh, content render. So you could do like, um, instead of doing that, you could do like, I right, just remove any unnecessary. Oh, oops. That's funny. So I thought you could do like um, blocks dot. Can I just like run? What's oh, inside of Xamarin Essentials? Let's see, C sharp link for each. Is it not built in? 
any reason for DuckDuckGo in the browser. Um, yeah, just use DuckDuckGo as a default. I thought for each was part of it. Um, I enumerable. Okay, got it. Interesting. So I guess we don't want to do that. Uh, parsed as enumerable. What is a markdown document? Okay, let's look at this. A markdown document is what? Container block, which is an I list and an enumerable. So the question I have is, do you even need to do that? And could you do I list? If it should have do I I think so. And then you could do like Wow, why is it there? Is it only like list? Only on list? Oh, interesting. It is an I list. All right, well, you might as well just get a list. And then you could just do something like this. You know, this would be like dot to list. If you're going to do two array, you might as well just to list it. And you do for each, and you do like uh, then render, right? B. Oh, just a single line. Yeah, you don't have to do it that way, but it's like, yeah, why not? So, but the question is like, what is it down here already? Yeah, so we, yeah. If you're gonna say as, oh, it's as, as list, as, as enumerable, returns input typed. Okay, well, I don't think I'll do that because I think that probably this may introduce a little bit more overhead if you're casting it. I thought that we could use I list. So we'll use the I enumerable, that's fine. I was hoping that we could clean that up a little bit. Um, okay, so here's one thing. So let's go ahead and let's just um, invert the if. So if there's no links, get out of there. So that's my code reviews. I'm, you get out of there safe, right? You got to guard it. So get out of there quick. I'm not a big fan of this. We're adding a tap gesture recognizer, a new one every single time, but okay. Um, This is, so you have to have Xamarin Forms to do this. So that's interesting, basically. Block links, navigate to link. Okay. What if there's not, okay. If it's greater than, okay. Greater than one. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so if it's greater than one, first or default, here's what I would do. Result, what? If it's greater than one, So this is gonna come in, attach links. So if, if there is multiple links, display an action sheet to pick links. Yeah, you know, the only thing I'm, I'm very fascinated about here is that you do, I guess they're, you're setting the, 
names here. They're not really translatable, but that's fine. Okay. Block links. Navigate to link. If it's greater than, grab the first one. What if they hit cancel? What if there isn't one? First or default? This is what I would do. I would say uh, this is a link. So this is going to be a link data. And I'll say link equals null. And then I would get rid of this. Okay. And then I would say link equals lock links. Uh, first or default. Okay. And then here, what I would do is I would then, if I code, just, just a little safeguarding here, right? So we know that block links has to exist, I guess, because there's the one there. And then I would say, if link does not equal null, then navigate to link and say link dot link. Okay, so that's good. Just like that. So you would do that just a little bit of safeguarding in general. Uh, var or named type your preference. I always use var all the time. I never use the named unless I have to do this because then I have to, you know what I mean? I could inline a temporary, but that doesn't work. That's too much. But yeah, that, that's the only thing is I'd always use var everywhere, pretty much. So this is also you just try catch everything and not do anything at all. I wouldn't do that. I would at least do a, a debug dot right line. Just at least put out the exception in general. Uh, OK, I'm just going to see if there's anything else here. Um, Okay, see we debug right line. Look at that. That's good. So any, I would just again, I would invert this. Why not? I would do like I don't know, like, why not? Just do that, you already have it, and then you're gonna clear it out. That looks good. That's interesting, remove, this is not even being used at all. Why is this in here then? Uh, that's fascinating. Again, here, I would invert this if. You just got to get out quick. If you're in there, you got to get out. Um, that's what I say. Um, yeah, I mean, most of this looks fine. List my list equals new. Yeah, you know, I like here. There's like, you know, they do use var everywhere. Where did you see that at? I would do var my list equals new list of string, the second one on there. I would never, like I would never make this I enumerable link data, for example. It would just be silly. That would just be silly. Okay, so this looks good. Um, block, case, heading. Interesting. Okay, so they're just going through some blocks. Getting blocks. Fun, fun, fun. Hmm. That's also interesting. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know this code too much, so I'm just kind of critiquing it based on like, what I'm seeing. See, like, this is good. Look at, look at, they get out quick, return new stuff. So they're going through each of these. 
Um, but you don't need an else because you're not doing anything because you're, you're returning it. So, oh, oh, I see. No, you don't need the else because you're returning. And you get out of there. Okay, cool. Um, oh, this and bullet. Okay, render. I mean, most of the stuff looks fine. I, I don't know. Um, that's a lot of code. Um, <laughs> I would do like a to do in there, maybe. It could use the new switch expression. Yeah, that would be nicer um, in general. Now, the question is do they have. What you'd want to do is you definitely want to at least do. Well, at least do 8.0, right? And then that would enable you to do the. Boom. Yeah, look at that. Boom. Amazing. Good one. Yeah, George, that's a good one. I think you do that in other places too. Let's see if that works up here in this. You have to turn on eight. So you have to turn on eight manually just because it's not 100% officially supported, but it totally is. Let's get the other switch in here. Does this one. This one. This one doesn't return. It does return stuff, but it returns a different stuff. So in this one, I'm not going to be able to do it. So. This is a huge switch case because you're, you're returning different stuff. Um, but I thought we had another switch in here somewhere. No, maybe we didn't. No, maybe this one. No, only because it wasn't returned stuff. But that one you could, which is great. So, good call. Either. Problems with using nine. Um, no, but there's a little bit of code that you need to turn on, basically. Um, yeah, same thing here. It's a good one. Like at minimum, if you're creating a library, just at minimum, do a debug dot right line. It's in debug mode. Not gonna be big, at least for yourself. You know that would be good. Um, I'm not a fan of this, uh, downloading images ourselves. I don't like that, but uh, I feel like I would rather use another image library for that. That's, uh, you know, we've got some regexes. I would make these uh, constants somewhere. Look at that, it's even art, it's adding, it's asking me, this to be YouTube pattern. It's gonna be, uh, oh, which one, that is a, this is YouTube watch pattern, I guess. Okay. Okay, same thing here, let's introduce a you really want these to be ooh, for all of, oh, there's only one occurrence, so, but yes. So it'd be YouTube pattern. All right, it's mad at me because I spelled it incorrect somehow. Why is it still, it shouldn't be mad at me, there you go, okay. This will be YouTube no cookie pattern. Oh, that's funny. And I definitely want to move this up top. Cool. At least get those just out of there. Uh, this must be in the editor config. So that's something, something with the editor config. Um, we can look at the editor config. Um, I 
I never know where to find it. There's a lot of things. Um, Outside, interesting. It's is set to outside. I don't know where it's at. It needs a search. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to say. search now oh con that's funny prefer deconstructed I don't know what it's under there's I like how I'm like there needs to be a search box there is cap fiddle I don't know where it's at there is something somewhere that has that thing in there um all right well i don't really know if i did any good uh in this thing but i mean the code looks fine i don't know oh uh, looks good there's a light theme there's a dark theme there's a mark there's a bunch of getters and setters and eh, it looks fine i think there's a, just a little bit of cleanup in there um yeah it looks fine there's image extensions I, I, I'm not a fan of downloading the images yourself, um, but yeah, ooh, yeah, there you go. Using, there we go, this is good. Boom. Using var, you definitely want to use var all the time. There we go. That's prettier. Um, mixed font sizes. Yeah. You know, I would say, yeah, it's it's just yeah, numbers, floats. I mean, that's what they are, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. It looks fine. See, look, constraint. There is a get. I don't know why though. It's like read me something like that. So I would put this in a regex too. That's just yeah, the named font size. That is probably what I would do. Um, Uh, to do can this be named font size stuff question mark that's a good question why and if it can't be yeah that's a good um good question video descriptor that's good i mean eventually these could just be records that would be super nice right the c sharp 9 you just need that extra bit of code for a uh, net standard library and that's like the main issue uh, putting it in there usually not an issue but you would need newer versions of of Xamarin, Android, and iOS, but it should work out of the box. It's compiler stuff, but should mostly work. Um, yeah, I don't know. This code looks fine. I don't know what to tell you. Um, looks good. Libraries, I, I wanted to do the library because I'm not sure if it's like, you know, um, you know, libraries are, you know, a little bit trickier, I would say, to do. Uh, let me make sure I didn't break anything. Let's go ahead and open this in folder view. Let's open this in code. All right. Yes. Um, updates from stream. That, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks, Bill. Have a good one. Yeah, I, I, I definitely enjoyed doing app reviews a little or app updates and tweaks and things like that a little bit more than um, the, the actual um, 
to the remote, add a remote, put it in there, boop. And then we'll do James. And then let's do a push to me. All right. And then, I don't know, did you guys find this interesting at all? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it terrible? Oh, it looks like he has a dev branch. I hope I didn't use a dev branch. It was cool. Okay. It was cool. That's good. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I, I do. There's a few things I want to work on. Oh, cool. Thanks, Hector. Thanks, Mary. There's a few things I do want to work on. I've been, obviously I have the Peloton app that I've been building out for a while, but I recently have been wanting to build a calorie counter app for myself so I can keep track of my cows as I go. Um, I thought that'd be kind of cool experiment, just like track my progress, do drip graphs and charts in general. Um, maybe one thing, because we kind of finished the Peloton app. I feel really good about that in general. Um, you can ask me a question, go for it. My fitness pal, yeah. My calorie counter pal, yeah. Oh, yes, um, the with Dotnet Maui or with Xamarin. Yeah, you know, I found with the latest preview that I had issues in debug mode. So I had to run without debug on Android. I had the same issue. I don't know what it is. It might just be an issue in the preview or something like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, just make sure your Visual Studio previews are up to date. I think it's just a bug right now. So did you did you leave that comment on my YouTube? I was going to reply. I, I did. I ran without preview and it worked OK. I had to ask the team. Maybe something's broken. I think it's I think it's like hot. I think what it is, or, oh, you know what you can do? Disable hot reload, and I think it will work. I think what it is is like hot reload is trying to connect, and I think there's like some mismatch of stuff in there. That's the other thing you can do too, is I think turn off hot reload in the settings, um, and that might work true too. And it, because you know what, I was on the dev blogs, I noticed something, and I didn't mention this in my video, but uh, I noticed down at the bottom, of the blog post that David put out for preview five here. Thanks for the follow, Mary. I appreciate that. As I noticed this, he said, if, uh, be sure to disable XAML hot reload to avoid a type error or stick with preview two. But I seem to have maybe that issue there. I don't know if this is the same issue or not. But it's worth it was worth trying at least. That's for sure. And so I did hope this is uh, relatively uh, fun. Hopefully it was good. Um, I'm using the normal. I have both installed, so I could try both, I guess, um, side by side. But you give give those a shot. Maybe it's the same error. Um, anyways, I hope that you found this relatively insightful. Seems like some of you did. I do have a lot of suggestions, so that's good. Maybe I'll do some more. I like doing the app UI reviews. Maybe I'll just stick with that. The code libraries. It's a little bit trickier uh, in general. Um, but yeah, hopefully we're there. Oh, this is funny. This is, um, I got to I gotta give a shout out to Lo uh, Sean Lawrence right now. Uh, this is hilarious. Uh, I just saw this in my inbox and it made me panic. I didn't think you're a water through the joke. Coder being your apps and libraries. That's quite entertaining. I like that. That's funny. That's cool. Oh, man. Uh, that's good. I'll take a look at some more uh, on here. Oh, lots of stuff. Lots of good replies. I see uh, Kevin did a bunch of other ones in here too. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me this morning. We have a great weekend if you're here in the United States. Uh, 4th of July this weekend. Enjoy America. Um, you know, we just we did it. America. Um, I hope that everyone has a safe holiday if you have a holiday here in the States. And if you don't have a holiday, well, I just hope you enjoy the weekend because it's almost weekend time. Probably already weekend time for you anyways. So I think it's going to do it. Do we have any, uh, oh, you know what? We'll just head over to C sharp Fritz. Cause I think he's still doing the, he's doing a workshop today. So let's just go ahead and raid him. We have a great one. Let's raid C sharp Fritz. He'll be excited for us that we're doing stuff. Let's go say hi to our friend, Jeff. He's been streaming for six hours. So let's do it. All right. Thanks everyone. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.